Hi, so it's Matt from Martial Arts Business Dojo, and today with me I have Debbie Stevens. So, hi, Debbie, how are you? Good, thanks, Matt. Very well. I was really, really, really pleased to have you on the, on today's show with us, having a chat. So, firstly, can we um, can can you just be, give us a brief overview of, of who you are and what you do? Um, yeah, very briefly, I started out as a um, sort of I think before I was ten years old. Unfortunately, was exposed to sexual violence, um, and I think that that is was the trigger for my life, my life work really as a woman. Um, initially, thinking all men rape, um, and that martial arts, traditional martial arts, was for me going to save me from being raped again. Um, as a young woman growing up, my parents um, thought only boys did martial arts. So when I'd asked them as a teenager, can I do martial arts? They said no. So the minute, literally the minute I stopped school and got my first job, I met a guy um, who did martial arts and um, Anton. And I said, um, wow, that's amazing. You do martial arts. I would love to do martial arts. I was like 19, I think. And he said, well, why don't you start? And I said, really? Aren't I too old to start martial arts? So I started and I trained, you can imagine, really, really hard. Um, I put everything into it, um, got my show done, um, but realized as I was going through this journey, like, but this isn't really how I was attacked. Like if I had to use this, it doesn't really, it, it's like the distance is wrong. The way, you know, it was like guys that I knew. So I started really exploring in my twenties, the difference between, I don't even like the word reality based self-defense, but how do you actually look after yourself as a woman? So if you fast forward the clock, I built a massive karate business. Um, I have lots of instructors working with me, phenomenal people. Um, and then I started um, traveling and training with people like Richard Dimitri in Canada, who's, he, we have very, very similar. We like, he's like my brother from another mother. Um, and Dave Turton in the UK. Um, and sort of started picking up bits and pieces of that training as a woman. And also realize, which is interesting, Matt, that it was such a, it's such a male dominated industry. Yes. Um, and, you know, I then sort of got very heavily involved in reality based stuff. I was the first international Senshido instructor, male or female, that qualified in the UK under Richard. Um, and I started even then, I still was thinking this isn't, it isn't really, it's not what women need exactly. Um, and I started looking very much at sort of the way, you know, as a woman, placing women in the center of it. And I asked guys like your syllabus, have you spoken to women? And a lot of the instructors out there haven't really spoken to women. <laughs> you know, they've made up a syllabus. Um, they've come up with something, but there hasn't been women involved in that, in the process. Um, so I, I got to a point eventually that I had enough confidence, I don't know, eight years ago. Um, with, with regards to self-defense, having trained with so many awesome people. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, my heart has always been in the third sector. Um, my heart's always been is, is like, I, yes, of course, I have to make a living out of this, which I was doing with my martial arts um, schools. But I want to take this to areas where patriarchy is very much alive and kicking. Um, and I want to try and be able to do this for free. You know, I don't want to charge people for it. So I'm a really big believer in like shared knowledge, free um, of charge. So Action Break Silence was founded in the UK in 20, 2013. And then I founded a separate charity. So totally separate board, totally separate charity in South Africa. Um, Action Break Silence South Africa. It, it takes, it almost leases the programs that we deliver. And now this year, we're going to be opening, actually, well, not we, a woman from India, separate charity, Action Break Silence India will open. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of in a nutshell. I think a massive change was for me was three years ago where I was accepted. I'd never been to university. I mean, as a child, I was reeling from, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress. Um, and as a teenager, I just, you know, I never got the grades at school and stuff. But three years ago, I did a master's, de master's degree in women and child abuse. And that totally changed me. Um, it was a different stream of knowledge. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, that's, a, that's an incredible journey. I mean, that really, fr from 
from the beginnings uh, and having that very very traumatic sort of experiences and stuff and had to to come through and now I mean, the scale of it, I mean, is this, we're not talking about somebody sets up a little Facebook group and does a little bit in the village hall. I mean, you are genuinely, genuinely global with this. I mean, that, the, 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 the amount of effort that you must have put into this must be incredible. How do you do it? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know what I've realized? The, the interesting thing is, is that I've been that kind of person since I was young. It, it's been like I've been a steam train. I've just gone and gone and gone. And I've only really, I've turned 50 this year. I've only realized this year um, through for the first time having some really proper therapy that the reason that I did that was that if I slowed down, I would have to deal with that childhood trauma. Mm. And I was, I was terrified. So I kind, of, I kind of had to do it, Matt. It was like I had to work that hard. Um, and the minute I did one thing and I succeeded, um, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't really take the time to reflect and, you know, acknowledge anything. I would just move on to the next thing. Um, and so that's maybe something really amazing about being in your fifties is I'm now ready to slow down. Um, not slow down, be smart. Yes. Yes. You know, I'll continue obviously building stuff, but be smart. So yeah, I think that that's, you know, I've had pretty much, I think anyone that knows me knows that my work comes first. Mm. really really interesting that you said about that and keeping busy for a reason because you didn't have to face things because um this isn't about me this is about you but i actually i wrote an article a short while ago where i talked about um being you know the voices in your head and staying busy and staying and, and having that because you didn't have to listen to those voices it was in the quiet times when they spoke you know um so the correlation is absolutely there and i totally understand what you're saying with that um one of the things that i find interesting about you not just interesting but um something i actually want to pursue with the conversation and that is uh the my own perception of the martial arts world now it is only my perception and I, i'd like to see what you think about it and also what your sort of thoughts are overall on that and that is that when we're talking about you know women empowerment female self-defense when we're talking about stuff that is geared towards women and a lot of women instructors i hasten to add to my in my opinion a lot of what they're teaching isn't actually gonna do them any good longer term in fact i would actually say that some of it is mm. actually dangerous so you, I, you know i really like your thoughts on that because this is what you do yeah i mean if we're on totally on the same page i sometimes see stuff on social media and it it just it drives me insane because of that because it's because it's dangerous um i i have such massive respect for a whole bunch of guys i'm very very I've, I've, i'm very good friends with a whole bunch of the you know um, industry guys mm -hmm. and well respected but shucks there's some people out there doing very scary stuff um i think that i think that it comes from I think it comes from a sense of absolute entitlement with some guys. They presume because they're men that they have some kind of innate knowledge. You know, like the average guy has no idea what to do. Like absolutely no idea. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, 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 it, it drives me insane. I, I, I'm one of those people that I like to pressure test things. I had a guy come and train with me years ago. Um, and he was really big ego and, you know, and he said, Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And then I would just kept quiet. And I had a couple of guys there that train with me. And I said to him, leave you, I hear exactly what you say. Should we pressure test it? Like, let's act out the scenario. And then the guys know me. They do, I didn't even have to say anything to them. I mean, they flattened this guy. Mm. Um, you know, I said, but what happened to all that, <laughs> you know, that fancy stuff? So Matt, you know, I think there is a, um, unfortunately, there's amazing people out there, fortunately, and there are people out there that are putting women in danger. I think a big thing is, I think a, a, a big, the biggest misconception about women is that it's physical, that physical is the most important. Mm -hmm. um, it is important, but it's not important as a preventative. I grab you, you do this. One, two, three moves. 
what women, you know, I think in the UK, 90% of women are raped by somebody that they know. Mm. And rape doesn't often look like the scenarios that so many of these people are training. Yeah. You know, it's the father, it's the, it's the boyfriend. It's the boyfriend just, you know, not accepting no. So I think that that's also um, something that frustrates me is I don't think people have, um, you obviously a really smart guy. You, you know, I really respect you. I can see that you've done, done the study um, behind, behind, um, behind this, but most, most people don't do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because I mean, people like Dave Turton, you've mentioned earlier on, I, I've done a lot of stuff with Dave over the years and, um, and, and there are some really, really knowledgeable guys out there that are, that are sharing knowledge on what I call genuine violence, because, um, as you've already alluded to, um, real violence for the most part doesn't look anything like the choreographed stuff that you see being practiced up and down the country that's not to that's not to dismiss anybody's training but it's it's just to to clarify that the skill set is different like you say and that's one of the questions i really wanted to get into you with because what i tend to find is women's self-defense classes are normally run by women for women uh, at a level that really doesn't doesn't touch any of the main points that are gonna that are gonna matter when it counts um, or you get the other side of it, which is, again, what you said, which is basically um, self-defense done by men from a male point of view, from a male perspective of what they think it will look like. And the psychological aspects are something that are very rarely talked about. And that's one of the first, you know, that's something I really want to discuss with you, because, um, you know, I hold firm that a room full of friends, all of the same sex, practicing things at a very low level, is, is of no benefit, um, personally, or very little benefit. And so how do you, how do you actually fix that problem? I think one of the things that I probably do quite differently is I, I talk quite a lot, um, discuss more than talking at, but about how incredible women are. Hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> it doesn't take any strength to take a finger and shove it to the back of somebody's eye socket. It isn't strength. It isn't a black belt. It isn't a body filled with tattoos and shaved hair, you know, because that's the image in the UK, certainly that you get of self-defense, you know, big macho guys. Anyone can do <laughs> You fit the part. Anybody, anybody can, anybody can do that. So what, why am I okay with that? Where, a hundred women aren't okay with that. Mm. I'm okay with that because I've been raped. Mm. I'm okay with it because I understand that I have a right to defend myself. Um, and also I understand that it's not necessarily a guy that's going to come up from behind me in the street and grab me and club me over the head and drag me into an alley. It might be, but it's a very small chance that it's going to be like that. Mm. Um, and so something that's very important is, 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 is um, understanding women's position in society and how pushed down we've been um, and how male entitlement, even in self-defense, if I walk into a room and a guy walks into a room, the people are going to look at the guy and say, oh, here's our instructor. And I'm like, no, no, he's just helping me. I'm the instructor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, is, it is like, and also because I don't look like scary as well. Um, but I had a woman this week calling me, um, she wants Action Break Silence to go to West Africa to teach and to do some training in West Africa. Um, and I asked her, you know, how did you hear about the charity? And she said, oh, no, I came to a talk that you did at a feminist conference um, like a couple of years ago. And I was so blown away because I'm a non-sporty woman. Um, I have been in a number of situations with men that have made me really terrified. Um, she has been sexually assaulted. And she said, you made me feel like I had the right to do it and that I had the capabilities to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's something that's really important is if, you, if you're able to um, convince women that part of them is, um, is aggressive, mm 
and it's okay because of course we're told we can't be aggressive and i always say to like a room full of moms can you imagine i want you to really imagine this i want you to imagine that this is a brick and this is a face and i want you to smash this brick into this person's face until he loses consciousness and they all look at you as if you are the most weird weird person and i say to them you're looking at me like oh my god i shouldn't be i shouldn't have come to this workshop and I say to them, like, what I'm so amazed at is that you're so good at pretending that you can't do that. Mm. Yeah. Like, let me just slightly change the story. He has got your daughter. He's ripped her top down and he's about to rape her. Would you pick this up and would you kill him? And the mother's eyes change. They go, she goes, I'll kill him. Mm. And I'm like, okay, that's great. That's our starting point. <laughs> Yes, Let's accept yes. that we have that. You know, we, yes, we can be beautiful. And it's the same as guys, Matt, as well. You know, the average guy isn't a fighter. Yes. But the average guy, I mean, all of us as human beings could kill somebody. Mm. Um, and for me, part of the journey is actually owning that and saying, I'm okay with that. If somebody crosses this line, I have the right to do anything. Mm. And I think that kind of talk for women, for me, has worked this woman said it changed her life mm. like she totally changed her life just the talk we hadn't even done any phys anything physical okay. so i think that that's that's really important yeah that that acknowledgement right there is such a powerful thing and um and, and, and a great way to actually address what it actually is because we can practice martial arts we can practice competition we can practice all of these things and we can enjoy that for what it is and, and learn from it for what it is. But you know, actual genuine full on violence that is life or death is that that's a different sort of kettle of fish and the mindset behind that is different. So um, yeah, I mean, absolutely hats off to you for that. Now, one of the questions that I've been asked to ask, um, which is a really good question, because I, I basically I'm coming this from a from a, a, a male point of view, right? And I'm aware that as a male, I think in a certain way, and I, you know, I, I have certain things in my head. Now, I'm not saying right or wrong because I think there are some wonderful things about being a bloke, um, and it's not all bad, right? However, I'm fully aware that that sometimes we can use that mindset, the male, the male mindset, if you like, and and that doesn't really translate across. So the question is what can we do as men to help this situation what you know what what is it that we can actually change about ourselves it's a really great question um when i was younger i was wholly centered on teaching women you know that was for me the drive and around 10 years ago i'm a very deep thinker um and i started thinking like i listening to all these women in india and the uk and south africa and I was thinking, but unless we're going to tackle the problem, which is men and how men think, nothing will ever change. So I designed a program for young boys, um, which is a hero empathy program. How do you, and, and I never thought I would say this, but like I have the, the biggest sense of empathy for guys, Matt, because of exactly what you said, you think in this way. If I look at masculinity and toxic masculinity, and I look at how young boys grow up, so I, we understand girls, hey? so we understand from like five, six years old, girls are being sexually harassed and people ignore it. Um, they look at boys and they say, oh, boys are just being boys. It's not serious. You know, and that escalates through young guys' lives. They get away with it. They feel more entitled by teenagers. They're having a couple of drinks and then forcing themselves on girls. So, but I tried to look at where all of that starts with men. Um, and this was a big part of my dissertation. I looked at what do primary school children think of sexual harassment and their role in preventing it. So I was asking young people about this, like, what is it that you do? And how do you, you know, do you understand that it's, destructive and hurtful and do you want to be a change in that mm. and i have this this um something that i share with guys when i'm teaching them um to engage them because if we're going to stop this like i need i need all the guys to stand next to me like it's not a woman's issue it's it's our issue it's a community issue um but i often look at guys and i imagine I'll just as an example with you matt i imagine you at three years old and there's no ways that you can look at any guy and imagine that he's three and not think, oh my gosh, he would be so cute. 
you know, like really cute because you can't not look at a three-year-old child and look at the innocence and the sweetness and stuff like that. This is before any stuff really is um, influencing that guy. And that guy just is emotional for whatever reason or for no reason. And he cries. And the minute he cries, his father smacks him on the back of the head and says, stop being a sissy, mm. you know? And his mother says, stop behaving like a, your, stop behaving like a girl. Mm. And so at that really, really young age, already masculinity is being put on almost every single guy. This is who you are. This is how you have to behave. Um, this is how you have to think. And for me, that's where the problem starts. And when I talk to guys like that, they're like, well, yeah. And all over the world, I've spoken to guys. And, and I said, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not making excuses for their bad behavior later in life. But what I am saying is I'm really sorry that society hasn't allowed you to develop in a natural, holistic way. Um, and we, we need to think about that. You know, you, you know as much as, I mean, I'm sure you do this, Matt, as a guy, you, you have to think like, what can I do? You know, how can I be different? How much of this is toxic masculinity? How much of it is the real me? You know, um, and how's that influencing my behavior? Um, one of the things that if you look at like, I've, we have this 12 hour schools program we do. And the second fa phase, one of it is girls are in their own class. They're doing empowerment through self-defense at 11. Boys are in another classroom. They're doing a hero, empathy, and active bystander program. And then they do six one-hour sessions. And there's a one-year break. And the following year, we bring them, and now we put them together. Now, you know, as a guy, um, if, if you were in a room with 20 girls, and I asked you to come to the front and talk, the average guy would freak out. They would be so uncomfortable at 11. And the guys on the action break silence um, at, when they're finishing phase two, you cannot believe the confidence that these guys have and the absolute want to be a hero in 2020. They mm. want to be, like they want to be nice. And I've spoken to so many like 10, 11 year old guys and they've said like, I don't want to do that to her. Like I feel bad, but like my friends are pushing me to do that. Mm. And that's, you know, when we look at a pyramid of abuse and you look at all the stuff at the bottom, rape jokes, sexual harassment, and stuff like that. That's what that that this is what people are engaged in, and everyone's ignoring it. You know, they're all focused on like the gang rape and the rape. But this is as destructive. It's happening millions of times every single day to every single woman in the world. Yeah, that's 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 really really pertinent again because um, I, I tend to firmly believe that if somebody is <clears throat> if somebody is confident and happy within themselves, they don't have any reason to put anybody else down to try and you know make themselves look better. Yeah. Uh, that base level for kids it's a great it's a great mindset to sort of get into but you're absolutely right and it's one of the things i was talking to earlier on when i was uh, having a little prep with chatting with you um and it was one of the things that we that, that flagged up was the um the approach should be to try and catch people as young as you possibly can to stop the cycle sort of carrying on because when it comes to um domestic abuse domestic violence that kind of stuff it quite often it is hereditary in the sense that it's you know it's it's family oriented and it carries on um and so is that a large part of what you actually try to achieve because it's not just self-defense in a physical realm it's it's right across yeah. the board, isn't it, what you're doing the self-defense part of it the physicality of it is in the 12 hour schools program i have a four hour self-defense workshop and one hour is a talk and the rest is physical mm -hmm. um but in the 12 hour schools program 25 percent of what the girls do is talk uh, is, is physical, sorry. 25% of what the girls do is physical. The rest of it is, um, you know, talking about the representation of men and women, talking about gender inequality, you know, talking about um, the psychology of violence, talking about who, who are the actual perpetrators. Because as a, as a society, if I ask any young girl anywhere in the world, tell me who you're scared of, they are scared of, in the UK, the, the, the average answer I get at, from private schools in the UK is working class, bald, tattooed, white van. It's me again, and, isn't it? Yeah, you know, okay. That's, that's, that's who they're scared of. Um, because the media and everyone says that rapists are other people. 
Mm. You know, they, they, they monsters. They're not monsters. They just your son. It's not a monster. And for me, that was a really important, very important for me. When I look at looking after myself as a woman, I understand that people that perpetrate sexual violence are everyday people. They're not super strong. They're not, you know, they're just everyday people. You shove your finger into the eye, the eye, they are going to let you go. Um, so yeah. So for me, the, for me, for me, the balance of physicality, I, I use physical, not as a preventative. I use physical as a tool of empowerment. Mm. So as a woman, I can be beautiful and, um, own my femininity and all of that. But then also I'm totally comfortable not being that. And yeah. so I think yeah. that's, it's how do we get women to be okay, not being feminine? Because you, if you're going to go physical, it's not, it's not feminine, it's masculine. You know, not male, female, but it is masculine. Yeah. So um, that's it. And the, obviously with the boys, I mean, one of the things I have to say, Matt, is I really, really ask guys out there because there's so many, the self-defense industry is dominated. Martial arts industry is dominated by men. Yeah. Um, I really, really ask them, please, please start teaching boys. Like, I can't tell you how many instructors I've spoken to. They've called me and wanted a job or wanted to work with me. And I've said, why do you teach? And they said, oh, because they really like women. You know, they want to help women. And I said, oh, well, that's amazing. So do you do anything for free? Like, do you have any classes for free? And they said, no. And I said, so, you, so it's actually about money. It's about you making a living. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and I asked them, you know, do you teach, do you teach young, the amount of time you've spent worrying about us as women, have you spent that amount of time worrying about you as men? You know, yeah. I yeah. don't understand why all these male instructors aren't teaching or haven't come up with a program to stop men raping, where mm -hmm. they looking at stuff like toxic masculinity, where they looking at entitlement. It, I'm stunned that I think there's a couple of people I know that are that are dealing with 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 guys. I think I'm the only person that I know that's dealing with boys so young, and mm. not looking at them as potential rapists. That's something really important. I'm looking at boys as literally um, the possibility to be a partner to stop this, mm. um, and that's something really, really, really important to me. Is mm. that action breaks silence listens to the voice of guys but not as leaders but as as people that have been pushed into becoming um you know pushed into believing they have a sense of entitlement yeah 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 totally 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 i mean that's that's such a powerful thing again i mean I, I'm, I'm really really enjoying this conversation and i don't know whether you can see it but it is actually really making the cogs turn yeah. um and it's making me think about some of my own things that I do and, and what can be looked at within that. So, um, that, but that leads on to another question that, that, that's been asked. And this, again, this isn't my question. So I'm not clever enough to think of some of these by myself, but I thought it was such a great question. And, and so basically the question is, how does society benefit when women are treated better? What, what, what actual tangible results are there from that? I think it's a very easy one to answer. I always say, I say, if you look at men's mental health, um, if you look at the suicide rate, men kill themselves more often than women. Yeah. And when you commit suicide, it's because you can't cope with the world. You are desperately, desperately unhappy and you can't see anything ever improving. Mm -hmm. And then you look at addiction, alcohol addiction, drug addiction. And again, not to say women aren't addicted or haven't been, have, have alcohol problems. Of course they do often linked to abuse that they've, that they've suffered, but men are, have issues with mental health, more issues with suicide, more issues with drug addiction and alcohol addiction. So my thing is because you taught as young guys not to communicate, mm -hmm. like not you, you, you told at a young age, every time you tried to be emotional, you were told that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. So, you keep everything inside. And it's, I've, I genuinely feel so sad when I think about how most guys grow up. Mm. And so for me, that, that is, um, 
it's such a major it's such a major issue yeah. um and that's part of what we do matt that's part if you're really looking into what what are the solutions then you have to start allowing you know the way parents parent has to change you go into a shop the child isn't even born yet and there is pink and blue now in 2020 we might have yellow you know but how can you put like i said to somebody i was out and about in london i saw this child in a pram um the child couldn't even walk yet it was in winter so it had that like you know those suits on like mm -hmm. a, a full all-in-one suit um and it was all camouflage you know like army mm. and then i wanted to say to that mother and father like why what are you doing now like what like what are the when you see that military what does it actually mean it means i'm trained to kill now how on earth can you put camouflage on a nine or ten month old baby boy that the symbolism behind that is i'm trained to kill yes and, and then could, people wonder you could equally flip that and say why why do people insist on piercing small babies ears i mean the, uh, yeah it's a similar sort of premise with regards to that there you're being i suppose being pigeonholed into what you should look and behave like um yeah. I mean, again it's, it's such an interesting conversation because my father committed suicide when i was a teenager oh shit, um, sorry. he was a heavy drinker you know i i i remember watching the descent i mean the relationship breakup lost yeah. everything and it was a really really horrible horrible thing um to, to witness and he was brought up to believe that men didn't talk about problems men just manned up that's the word but you know man up and um and it's it was it, it was a real lesson for me in so many ways you know and, and one of those things specifically is the very real thing that you know that suicide in men is massive the mental illness in men is massive the but we are you, you can't watch a television program without seeing the steely jawed hero you know taking it on the chin and all the rest of it you know it's it's where we are pre-programmed to not you know to, to not show emotion and my theory on that and I, I don't know whether this is something that you would agree with or not but my theory on that is that um if we're pre-programmed not to show it and not to let it out in healthy ways it's going to find avenues to sh to express exactly. it in negative ways and um yep. and so I, I think i think you really what you're doing with with kids and young guys i think is absolutely brilliant and something is really really required in the world so um, i'm afraid to say that as much as i'm enjoying this we are actually coming at a time which is uh, which is such a shame um so if people want to reach out if people want to get involved with what you're doing uh, how do they go about that um they just have to google action break silence so action and then breaks with an s and then another s silence action break silence.org and all our details are on there all right, Marvis, and you mentioned that you had uh, clubs in the UK as well. I have, yeah, I have a karate business in the UK, Shotokan Karate. So we've obviously, um, yeah, I've got about fifty dojos, um, and that's sort of, yeah, that's just traditional Shotokan Karate, and it's Funakushi Shotokan Karate. They can, you know, Google my name, D E B I Stephen, and you'll find all the information. All right, fabulous. So, uh, Debbie, thank you ever so much for coming on. It's been a really, really interesting and enjoyable conversation. So thank you. Matt, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much.